Uh, so thanks for introducing me. Uh, so hello everyone, I'm Kyohei from the University of Tokyo. And today I'm going to talk about our paper on difficulty adjustment algorithms used in blockchain systems. So this paper is a joint work with Shunya, who is an assistant professor at UBC, and Yoshinori, who is working at the company Turingon. So let's get started. So first of all, let me briefly overview today's presentation. Oops, sorry. So a blockchain system is an electronic payment system. And so it needs to process transactions at a constant rate. For example, Bitcoin aims to process transactions every 10 minutes. And for that purpose, the algorithm named Difficulty Adjustment Algorithm, or DAA, plays an important role. And one may ask, is it well designed? And the answer is unfortunately no. So our first finding is that the Bitcoin's algorithm dismisses stakeholders' incentive, and as a result, it may fail to stabilize the system. But at the same time, we also found that the algorithms used in other blockchain systems do not have the same problem. And because there is already a good alternative, by just upgrading its algorithm, Bitcoin can overcome its problem. However, this is not the end of the story. We found that most people in Bitcoin community may disagree on the upgrading. So it's not that easy to implement a new algorithm under the current system. So this is the outline of today's presentation. Before going to our main result, let me explain how a blockchain system works and in particular, what the difficulty adjustment algorithm is. And in this presentation, we mainly focus on Bitcoin for simplicity, but let me note that our analysis can be applied to more general blockchain systems. So blockchain is, as its name suggests, a chain of blocks. And the blockchain system works as follows. So first, there are users of the electronic payment system and they send their transaction requests online. Then there's another group of people called miners. The miners are record keepers in the system and they inspect and validate these transaction requests and integrate them into one block and add it to the chain. So every time a block is added to the chain, the transactions contained in it are processed. So this is the whole picture of the blockchain system and our paper focuses on these miners' behavior. So next, let's look at what miners are doing. So miners are actually competing for the right to add a block. So they are involved in hash computation, which is equivalent to a lottery draw. So every time they compute a hash value using their computer, they draw one lottery and see whether they, they win or not. And millions of miners are working on this hash computation all over the world. And the one wins the first is allowed to add a block and get the reward paid by Bitcoin. So different blocks can be made by different miners and all miners are working for this block reward. Miners are totally selfish and they don't care about the behavior of the whole system. However, there is a goal that the system must achieve. So Bitcoin system aims to generate blocks every 10 minutes. So why 10 minutes? So if it's too slow, the system suffers from low throughput. So the system cannot process the enough amount of transactions and this is problematic for the electronic payment system. And on the other hand, if it's too fast, the system suffers from synchronization failure. So let me explain it. So blockchain systems are decentralized. And so all people in the system needs to agree on the same history. So in other words, all the people need to have the same blockchain on their computer. And it takes some time to broadcast the information about a newly created block on the network. So if blocks are created too rapidly, people cannot have the same blockchain and that means they cannot agree on the same history. So due to these reasons, 
it's very important for the system to stabilize the block arrival rate. Okay. And there are two key factors that determine the block arrival rate. The first factor is winning rate, and this is the probability of winning per hash computation. And this is policy variable. That means the system can freely choose the value for this winning rate. And another key factor is hash rate, and this is the total amount of hash computation conducted all over the world. And the point is, this is unobservable, and this can vary across time because in Bitcoin system, everyone can become a miner whenever they want. Then the block time approximately follows exponential distribution with intensity WH, and its expectation is one over WH. And this block time is observable. So here is our policy goal. So by just controlling the winning rate W, Bitcoin system wants to achieve this equation. That means the expected block time is equal to the 10 minute target. So our problem boils down to how we can achieve this policy goal equation. So now let's look at the current Bitcoin DAA. So Bitcoin DAA adjusts its winning rate every 2016 blocks according to this update rule. So the system first computes the ratio of the average block time in previous epoch to the ideal block time. And then multiply this value with the current winning rate and then obtain the new winning rate, W new. So roughly speaking, if the average block time was too slow, then the system increases the winning rate, expecting that this shortens the block time and vice versa. So it's very intuitive, but actually we can say a little more about this update rule. So by rearranging terms, we can see that the update rule can be rewritten like this. And in addition, we can show that this term is actually the maximum likelihood estimator of the hash rate in previous epoch. So let's denote this h hat old. Then Bitcoin DAA is equivalent to this formula. Recall that the policy goal equation has the similar form. That means Bitcoin DAA can be interpreted as a sample analog of the policy goal equation. So what Bitcoin DAA does is first estimate the hash rate and then adjust its winning rate. So this is the Bitcoin DAA. So now let's look at our main insight. So our primary finding is that Bitcoin DAA dismisses miners incentive. So miners incentive can be written like this. So in order to draw a lottery, they need to compute a hash value using their computer. And in order to do so, they need to pay electricity cost. So miners turn on their machines only when the expected reward is larger than the cost. So suppose now that winning rate increases, then the expected reward also increases. So more and more miners are turning on their machines and as a result, hash rate goes up. So the, po the point here is that the change in winning rate also changes the hash rate. So this update rule does not guarantee that the equation still holds after the hash rate changes. So let me elaborate this point using a figure. So this is a policy curve. So the system wants to achieve some point on this curve. And this is a supply curve. So we can see that the hash supply is increasing in winning rate. And in this region, block time is too slow. And in this region, block time is too fast. So the policy goal can be achieved by setting the winning rate to this W star, which leads us to the intersection of the policy curve and supply curve, okay? And suppose that the current winning rate is here, W old then miners choose this level of a hash supply, H old. And now we can see that the block generation is too slow. Then Bitcoin DAA estimates the current hash rate 
and adjust its winning rate to W nu. However, miners respond to this change in the winning rate and choose a new level of hash supply, H nu. So the system fails to choose the ideal level of winning rate and overshoot occurs. And a process like this is repeated again and again, and the winning rate never converges to the policy goal. And this figure reminds us of the famous cobweb dynamics. Okay, then let's dive into our main results. So we show that Bitcoin DAA can be unstable under certain condition. So in order to understand our results, let me introduce an important concept, reward elasticity of hash supply. This is the ratio of person change in hash rate to person change in the reward. So look at these figures. So in the left figure, hash supply is elastic in the sense that the supply is sensitive in the, to the change in winning rate. On the other hand, in the right figure, hash supply is inelastic in a sense that supply doesn't change much when the winning rate changes, okay? Then here is our theorem. So we show that Bitcoin DAA is stable only when the elasticity is less than one. And we will see later that this condition can be violated in reality. So this result says that Bitcoin DAA is problematic. However, there are many other blockchains in the world and we found that some of them uses much better DAAs. So this is the next result. So Bitcoin Cash is another blockchain system. So it's kind of spin-off of Bitcoin. And we proved that its DAA is stable as long as the elasticity is less than some large number. And we can say that this is almost always satisfied in reality. So our theory says that Bitcoin DAA is fragile and it's problematic. However, one may argue that you know, Bitcoin has been okay so far, right? And this historical fact proves that our analysis here is nonsense. And we can respond to such an argument as follows. So Bitcoin worked well because its price was sufficiently high. And, and under such high prices, miners always turn on their machines and hash supply becomes inelastic. So we show that in late 2018, Bitcoin system was about to face a crisis. So in that period, the lowest expected reward recorded in Bitcoin history, and as a result, many miners turned off their machines. We conducted a simulation study. So what we did is first replicate the economy of November 2018, and then generate 5,000 sample paths. So we conducted counterfactual analysis. And we observed that with probability more than half, Bitcoin system got out of control. So in other words, our results suggest that Bitcoin survived that period by sheer luck. So these figures show a typical sample path in our simulation. So here, blue line corresponds to the ideal level of winning rate, and red line corresponds to the realized winning rate under Bitcoin DAA. So we can see that Bitcoin DAA fails to trace the ideal level of winning rate, and as a result, block time is highly unstable. And on the other hand, Bitcoin Cash DAA behaves much better. And now let me give you a warning. Uh, such a crisis may occur again in the future. Why? So we have seen that Bitcoin system can be unstable when hash supply is elastic. And hash supply becomes elastic when the expected reward is low. And this is possible when, for example, Bitcoin price decreases. And be because the Bitcoin price is highly volatile and unpredictable, we cannot say that the price will remain high forever. And that means a crisis may occur in the future and we should change the current DAA to prepare for the future crisis. So there is already a good alternative, Bitcoin Cash DAA. And so Bitcoin can stabilize the system by upgrading its DAA. And that upgrade is beneficial to users. However, we found that most miners may disagree on the upgrading. 
So look at this figure. So this figure shows miner's profit under different DAAs. So each miner has his own electricity cost, and so every miner is located on some point on this horizontal line. So we can see that miners with high electricity cost prefer a more unstable DAA. Why? So suppose now that you are a miner with high electricity cost, then under stable DAA, the system keeps, always keeps the low winning rate, then you can never turn on your machine and you can enjoy no profit. On the other hand, under unstable DAA, you can turn on your machines in easy to win epochs and you can enjoy positive profits. So to sum up, the upgrading is unprofitable for high cost miners and they may disagree on upgrading. So we are now almost at the end of the presentation. So let me briefly give you a takeaway. So Bitcoin DAA is fragile as it dismisses miners' systematic response to difficulty adjustment or the change in winning rate. And this problem really matters in practice. And Bitcoin Cash DAA is much more robust and Bitcoin can stabilize the system by upgrading its DAA. However, most miners may disagree on the upgrade. So this is the end of our talk. So thank you for listening and any questions or comments are highly appreciated. Thanks.